Oh, hi guys. So I was sitting here coloring and I was thinking about who invented the crayon. Have you ever wondered who invented them? Well, you're in luck. Today we're gonna to hear a story called The Crayon Man. And it's a story about the man who invented the crayon. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that one day you can invent something just like he did. The Crayon Man, the true story of the invention of Crayola crayons by Natasha Bebo, illustrated by Steven Salerno. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere. He noticed the yellow-orange petals of the black-eyed Susans in his garden. He marveled at the rich scarlet-red tones of the cardinal's feathers. He admired the deep blue-greens of the waves in the sea. Color made him really, really happy. But all day long at work, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish. His name was Edwin Binney, and he was an inventor. He worked with his cousin, C. Harold Smith. Together, they were Binney and Smith. Harold was a great salesman. He loved to travel the world. Edwin was curious. He had a knack for listening and making what people needed. Edwin invented a new kind of an inexpensive slate pencil that wrote very smoothly. It was gray. Children loved it. He invented a kind of chalk that wasn't dusty and didn't crumble. It was white. Teachers loved it. He invented a wax crayon that would write on wood and paper packaging. It was really, really black. People loved it. So when everyone, including Edwin's wife, Alice, told him that children needed better, cheaper crayons, he listened. They said, the crayons we have are big, dull, and clumsy. The lumps of colored clay only make fat, chunky lines and the artist crayons from Europe are far too expensive. They crumble and break easily. Some are even poisonous. Edwin thought about his company's inventions. When you drew a picture with their gray slate pencil, it rubbed off at the drop of a hat. When you drew a picture with their white chalk, it smudged everywhere. If you drew a picture with Ed Edwin's new really black crayon, it was, well, really black. None of these inventions was any good for drawing in color. So Edwin listened and Edwin invented. In a small stone mill in Pennsylvania, in a top secret lab, Edwin's team experimented. How could they make better, stronger crayons? Melted paraffin wax, perhaps. Now for the crayon colors, grinding, grinding, grinding up rocks and minerals into fine powders. Mixing, mixing, slate for gray, earth for yellow, red and brown perhaps. Oh yes, and lapis for blue. Pounding, sifting, and heating the colored powders, would they be bright enough? Edwin's team kept on trying. They kept on experimenting. They came home covered in color. They experimented some more and discovered a pinch of this pigment, a sploosh of that one, a little hotter, a little cooler, and voila, lots of different shades. Now there were greens, oranges, violets, and pinks too. Edwin came home color covered in color. In a large tub at the mill, Edwin's team measured out the ingredients, melted wax, clay to thicken, something for mixture, colored powders, each in just the right amount every time to make a top secret formula. Slowly, carefully, stirring by hand, they poured the special formula into thin crayon-shaped molds, smaller than any other inventors, just the right size for children's hands. The mixture cooled and hardened. Edwin watched and Edwin waited. Finally, one summer evening in June 1903, Edwin came home covered in color and announced that he'd invented a new kind of colored crayon. But what should he call it? Alice had an idea. She said, let's mix the French word cray for stick of chalk and the word ola and the word olaginous, meaning oily like the oily texture of the crayon wax to invent a new word, Crayola. Crayola. Edwin listened. Binny and Smith shipped out the first cray Crayola crayon boxes. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. Eight colored crayons for only a nickel. Edwin waited. Would children like them? Children did. Now they could draw a tiny green caterpillar on the big blue sky. Their drawings wouldn't smudge and they wouldn't rub out. 
They were bright and could last a long, long time. Excitement over the new colorful invention spread like wildfire. Admirers from far and wide flocked to marvel at Binney's and Smith's inventions at the St. Louis World's Fair. The company's dustless chalk even won a gold medal. Proudly, Edwin and Harold showed it off, especially on their new Crayola crayon boxes. Every day, Edwin brought colorful bouquets from his garden to inspire the Crayola team. They made crayons in even more different shades, and later asked children to help name some of them. At last, because of Edwin Binney, the man who saw color everywhere, who had a knack for listening and making what people needed, children all around the world would reach for just the right shade. Sun glow, wisteria, jungle green, screaming green, razzmatazz, robin's egg blue, wild watermelon, marvelous, purple mountain's majesty, cadet blue, lavender, timberwolf, to draw anything.